Hey guys, this is the second part of my unboxing series with the uh, Moving Parts six pack where I purchased them at Amazon on Black Friday. This was also around 28 or $29 Canadian plus tax and I'm just gonna have a quick look at the box. We have the beautiful Range Rover at the front in white, which I think is a fantastic color for it. Those are the vehicles that they have presented at the back and then at the side, you see the Nissan and a Ford, at the front just says moving parts. And I love this box because it's just so collectible and it just provides such a great place to host the vehicles. So I right, already went ahead and snipped open the two plastic pieces you see there. So it's gonna take me less time to unbox it. I haven't opened it up yet, but we'll do that together. So here's my one-handed attempt of opening this box. Okay, so there you go. So very similar to the six packs we opened earlier with the Lamborghini. It's the same design, which makes sense. And you can see the six vehicles there. It's the 2018 Land Rover Vogue SC, the 1963 Chevy C10 pickup. We have a 1932 Ford pickup, Divco. Typically it has been a milk truck. And we have the 2019 Ford Ranger and the 2000 Nissan X-Terra. So some nice vehicles here, guys. I think it's a good price for the caliber of vehicles. And I actually don't have any of these in my collection. So I'm very, very happy to add this set of six cars. And as per the last box, you can see they're all wrapped in plastic. So give me a second while I take them out of their plastic and we will do a quick review of each of these vehicles. All right, so I have taken them out of the packaging and we're gonna look at each vehicle individually. Uh, we begin with the 1932 Ford pickup. And I haven't figured out what the opening part is. I'm assuming it's the doors. <laughs> it is the doors, but they're not easy to open. Might need to get a knife or something to get that open, but Anyways, let's have a look at the vehicle. Black on black, detailed grill, first version of this particular vehicle that I own. I think it's a really nice casting. So well designed, considering when the vehicle was made. 1932 is getting to be almost 100 years now, 90 years old. But beautiful. Amazing design. What a great job for dead. And a beautiful casting as well. So incredible um nice set of tires they are plastic they're always plastic in the moving parts line they're not rubber like the premium line that's what really differentiates the the two lines that matchbox does there this is really nice i'm not going to spend too much time on it i have nothing to compare it to it's a nice vehicle next we're going to look at the divco i'm going to call it a truck i guess it says skippers saved shaved ice and the moving part are these opening doors at the back. I'm just gonna open the other one as well and we'll have a look inside. So fully detailed inside. It's a metal frame. Look at that, look at the detail. This is actually a really, really nice casting. I haven't collected it in the past, but I think I'm gonna start collecting it. And I've always wanted the golf version of this, but never seen it anywhere, so. There's the interior, which is also fully detailed. This is a really, really nice casting. I don't think it gets the credit it deserves. I love the little touches with the door already being open. Fantastic set of colors. Yeah, really nice. Difficult truck. I did get it right. 
So white base, white bumper, detailed front. Back is not in detail, but the moving part is in the back. Yeah, really nice. What a great vehicle. All right, next we're going to look at the 2018 Ford Ranger, which I think, as far as my collection goes, this is the first version of this particular vehicle that I own. There's nothing in the back of the trailer there. The moving part is the hood, and there's the uh, engine and different moving part, parts. For the, sorry, the engine and the different parts in the vehicle. It's quite well detailed, as you can see. It's got a beautiful Ford emblem at the front. As you can see, the engine doesn't close as well as it should, which is obscene in my opinion, given the precision of the technology we have in today's day or in this day and age, I should say. I mean, when you looked at the vehicles from the 70s and 80s that had moving parts, they shot perfectly. So Matchbox really has to put some money into their design and equipment and just do a much, much better job of getting the precision uh, with these moving parts. I mean, if you're going to have moving parts, do it right. I mean, this is just cheap, shoddy manufacturing and it's not good enough. And the only reason I say it because the older stuff was perfect and we certainly didn't have the precision cutting tools and design tools that we have today. This is um, unacceptable uh, quality in my opinion. I've seen this same sort of thing happen with much, much more expensive you know, vehicles that Mattel does in their, in their um, Hot Wheels line. So it's definitely an issue that they have. They keep charging premium pricing for certain things and providing shoddy quality. Not good enough in my opinion, but still a well-designed car as far as the looks go, but look at that, look at the gap, like, that is just terrible. Yeah, nobody drives a Ford <laughs> with a one-inch opening, that's what it would probably scale into in, in real life. Anyways, let's forget about that and look at the car, so the back is not detailed, there's no detailing at all, lights are not filled. It's a good car, but just shoddy quality in their manufacturing. So next we're looking at this 1963 Chevy C10 pickup in a beigey gold, I'm going to call it. So once again, the back is not detailed, but this one does have a chrome bumper, good set of wheels. Nothing in the back of the pickup there. The opening part is the hood again, and you can see the engine. That's really, really well done. And this one actually closes really well. Look at that. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's much better than the Ford we just looked at. But once again, like the position just isn't good enough. Just a little bit too much of a gap. So no detailing other than the side tempo, which Matchbox tends to do sometimes. I would rather not have the side tempo and have the front and back detailed. Um, but this one does have a lovely chrome base, which filters into the bumpers, which is nice. Still a nice vehicle. I like it. I think I'm going to start collecting that one. It is quite nice. And then just moving along real quick here. Next we have the 2000 Nissan Xterra in yellow. And I think the moving part is the back opens, but once again, this is a difficult one to open, so I'm not gonna waste my time doing so. But let's just have a look at the vehicle. Once again, it doesn't really fit that well, the moving part. You can see a big gap or a slight gap. Look at that, it doesn't quite fit. But other than that, it's a well-designed vehicle. This is a very collectible vehicle. So detailed front, 
detailed sides, you can see the black stripe across the vehicle and a detailed back as well. Not easy to get this moving part open, but I literally have no nails, so that's probably part of the issue. But even with that, you can see the bit of a gap there. So there's there are quality control issues at the Matchbox factories for sure, or perhaps it's a design issue. Once again, this piece feels like a plastic piece, but it's hard to tell. I can't tell if that's metal or plastic. It does feel plasticky, but I'm not certain. But I can tell you that it doesn't close properly. It doesn't fit as well as it should. So once again, a very nice car. I don't mean to <laughs> drag Matchbox down, but seriously, get the quality control correct. You're charging premium prices. Give us a premium product. And I wish more influencers, Matchbox or Hot Wheels influencers, would get this message across to um, Mattel because you know they design fantastic cars and then they cheap out on places they shouldn't and uh, there are quality control issues that they need to work on. Anyways, moving along, a car that doesn't typically have any quality control issues, at least in the die cast line, can't say the same thing for the real car, uh, is the Range Rover, the 2018 Land Rover Vogue SE. In white, this is the uh, first white version of this vehicle that I own. I think it looks absolutely amazing in white. It was first introduced in 2019, I think. It was uh, part of the 50th anniversary issue. They issued it in black. And then there's also a blue version that I never got my hands on. And just have a quick look at this. So I do have three versions of this vehicle. I think there are five in total. Um, so it's got sort of a light gray interior. Let's see if I can open the trunk. Oh, see, this one opens really easy. Nothing inside the trunk, but it's a well-designed vehicle. Good set of tires. I think they, they could have a better set of tires for this. Something a little more gangster might be nice to have on this vehicle, I think. This is like the family version of it. Left-hand drive well designed even the mo moving part i mean it still could be better it's still not precise enough for me but this one is fairly good and there's the back of it and then i have the version from 2022 and i just opened it so there it is oops and there's the package that it came out of Let's just have a look at the back of it real quick. 2018-2022 license. They look sharp, don't they? The interiors are both exactly the same color. So this one looks, seems like it fits way better. The moving part is much, much better than the one on the white, or maybe it's just the color disguises it better, but it does seem to be a lot better in terms of the fit. And then I do also have it in what I'm gonna call a burnt orange, and that's from the premium line, and the only difference between this particular vehicle and the other two is that the orange one actually has rubber tires. And it also has a different color interior. I think this is a really, really sharp line that Matchbox does. I'm definitely gonna try and collect the other two that I don't own, which is the original blue version. And then I think it came in black as a moving parts vehicle. that's it guys so i'm going to try and keep this under 15 minutes so let's just have a look at all the cars that we looked at today there's the 
1932 Ford pickup, the Divco truck, the 2018 Ford Ranger, the Nissan Xterra, and last but not least, the 1963 Chevy C10 pickup, which they've also done in the very, very premium line, that's like $25, the RLC line, let's call it, that you can only buy in Mattel uh, collection collections. Anyways, guys, that's it. This is uh, my last moving parts video. And before I end, I just want to show you some of the other moving parts vehicles that I do own. Uh, I will open these up one day. We already saw the uh, the Range Rover. There's another Porsche, the 2020 Porsche 911 Carrera, the Mitsubishi Lancer Celeste, which I can't wait to open. And of course, there's a 2020 Corvette that I'm also looking to open at some point. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so, guys. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like it on YouTube.